Hey everybody, I'm with Gway at 8th Fire Solar in Osage, Minnesota. Hey Gway. How's it going? Good, thanks for letting us see the back room of your um, solar manufacturing. Tell us about it. Yeah, so this is our Osage shop. We uh, manufacture and install solar thermal panels here. We are an indigenous-led team, very small team, about four or five of us. Uh, we really pride ourselves on being local and uh, sourcing a lot of our materials locally and regionally. So about 98% of our materials are sourced in the States uh, and even in Minnesota. You're a mm -hmm. nonprofit? Yeah, we are a program of a nonprofit. So we, uh, we focus mainly on low-income tribal communities. Uh, we want to help with energy independence, energy security, and tribal sovereignty. Um, so the way our system works is it's a forced air system. It uh, works by providing supplementary heat to a home by recirculating the air inside a home. This is really cool to see. So here it is. Yeah, so these are five of our 10-foot panels. Um, as you can see, it's not a lot of hassle when it goes up. So these five panels we installed with the Leech Lake Tribal College. Um, about 13 or 14 of their students came up. First we went there, uh, we did a little classroom presentation on solar thermal, the benefits. And then we brought them here and we uh, worked side by side with our team and their students and we installed the system in two days. Can you tell me the difference between the different kinds of solar? Sure, so there's uh, solar thermal, which is what we specialize in here, which is usually the heating of a fluid um, to produce radiant heat, supplementary radiant heat in a house or building. Um, it's usually a fluid, but here we work with air. So these panels recirculate the air in a home, heat it up so we can pull from, you know, say you have a chilly basement. We can pull from the basement, drop it in the living room, or maybe the living room is really sunny. We can pull from the living room, drop it in the basement. Um, so that's how solar thermal works. It's really simple. Um, solar photovoltaic, on the other hand, is the uh, tr transmission and generation of electricity. So the way a solar photovoltaic system works is these little cells on a panel, uh, usually on a roof, we mount on the walls, um, usually on a roof. They work in series or parallel, it's called, which is kind of um, just the basic term you need to understand. Um, and um, so the sunlight comes in and these little electrons run through the cells and then they, from the cells, you can either, and there's different systems too for photovoltaic. There's, um, you know, for example, grid tied where you're working with the utility, either sending back for an incentive or they're paying you for it. Or there's battery based where you're keeping everything in the home um, and kind of being self-sufficient. That's what we think of when we talk about off-grid systems. Um, but all those different systems work on the same concepts of um, series in parallel and electron flow. So through that, you know, you can have, you know, a pretty well-designed system that can offset a lot of your usage. The one misconception I would say, um, and this is kind of a tangent, but a lot of people, you know, will go to a solar installer and say, hey, I want my house to be, I want, I want, I don't, I don't want to pay electric anymore. You know, I want it to be, you know, off grid, quote unquote. What they don't understand is that the realistic usage that they had, you know, this idea that they have is not realistic um, because they don't consider a lot of the load, the load that they have in their home. So you're thinking of, you know, your microwave, your toaster, all of these things run all the time for the most part. You're thinking of that little clock that's on the toaster or on the oven, that's always running. Even your TV waiting to be turned on, that's called a phantom load. So these things are always running. Really what you need to do is lessen that load. So think about what do you really need, you know? water pump, you know, uh, sewage, you know, um, boiler, so things like that. That's really what a, that's where a, a solar PV system shines. Um, that's the same thing with the solar thermal. Lowering that usage so that the offset margin is a lot larger than what it could be. Why is this important to you, just solar in general? I think renewables in general is really the key term there because when I think about it, I mean, the. At first, at first, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this was just a paycheck. You know, to me, I didn't, it didn't really matter, you know. Um, but as I learned more about the system, I learned more about, um, you know, the overall energy system, the energy field. Um, I just discovered that, you know, renewables, there's a big need for it. And that's not to say that it's the, it's the cure all, right? I think there's a lot of different things that we need to work on as a, uh, you know, as a, as a species even. Um, to kind of better our environment and better our, uh, our living. But I think renewables are a big step towards that, you know, specifically things like solar thermal where, you know, in the Northwest up here where it's 
heat is less of for comfort, it's more for survival, right? I think something like this is really important because it can offset that usage that we, you know, that we depend so heavily on and everything's from outside, right? So on a reservation, for example, everything comes from off reservation. It's off reservation utilities, it's gas and groceries from another town. So we have this economy that's kind of bleeding out and there's no real independence. There's no real sovereignty. So for me, um, personally, as an indigenous man, I look at these as a great way of kind of, you know, upping that independence and that security and lessening, lessening that reliance on, on outside forces. And the same goes for, you know, rural communities that are non-indigenous because it's the same concept of someone else owning all the power that you use, right? So having something like this or solar photovoltaic or geothermal, that's you taking that power back and you owning that power, right? So that's less depending on someone else. So Eighth Fire Solar, that's one of our main goals is workforce development and then retention, right? Because we can train people all we want. You can train people all day, but if you don't have that work for them to do, then what's the point, right? So that's one of our big pushes is, is getting in the communities, travel communities specifically, doing these trainings and then having work for them to follow up with. Because a lot of the times in our travel communities, there's this job scarcity. There's not a lot of employment opportunities. Um, that could be because of distance. You know, a lot of reservations are very isolated. That could be because of education level or criminal background. There's so many different variables. Um, but with that being said, there needs to be somebody that can come in and, and help with jobs besides, you know, working at a gas station or working at a casino. There needs to be work that, you know, is fulfilling, right? And then also, you know, can help you and your family at the end of the day. So I think renewables specifically are a great way of doing that. And then for us as indigenous peoples also, it's a part of our identity, right? You know, the, the land stewards, the people with the, you know, in touch with our environment and in balance with that. So, you know, renewables are the modern way of doing that, I think.